Hi, it's Dave Usom from the Neuroradiology Division of Johns Hopkins Hospital. Today I'd like to share yet another Neuroradiology Pearl and Pitfall with you. Let's take a look at the case. Here we see two scans from the patient's MRI. This is the flare sequence, and what one sees is bright signal intensity bilaterally in the amygdala and in the medial temporal lobes. What's interesting about this case is that the temporal horns are slightly dilated and there is no mass effect. What are we to do with this? Well, typically when we see medial temporal lobe abnormalities bilaterally, we think of herpes encephalitis. However, herpes encephalitis, particularly in the acute phase, would cause mass effect and obliteration of the temporal horns. So this may be a chronic herpes infection or a residual of a herpes infection. But that was not the diagnosis in this case. In this case, the diagnosis was limbic encephalitis secondary to a perineoplastic syndrome. The perineoplastic syndromes are due to antibodies directed towards antigens which cross-react with normal structures. The antigens that we typically see in neuroradiology are the HU, YO, RE, TRA, and voltage-gated calcium channel blocker uh, antigens. The HU antigens would be ones directed towards the neurons, the YO to Purkinje cells, and that would lead to cerebellar degeneration. The RE also to neurons, which may again lead to limbic encephalitis. The TRA to Ver Purkinje cells, those directed against the voltage-gated calcium channels, would lead to a myasthenia gravis-like syndrome and weakness. And this is often seen in patients with thymoma. So this is a specific diagnosis that could be suggested based on bilateral abnormalities in the medial temporal lobes associated with volume loss. The patients may have the symptoms of limbic encephalitis or, as I stated previously, cerebellar degeneration. And the primary tumors that are most commonly associated include small cell lung cancer, neuroblastomas, breast cancers, ovarian cancers, and sometimes lymphomas. With regard to those against the voltage-gated calcium channels, those are more likely to be secondary to thymomas. You can see this presentation as well as other educational material on our Johns Hopkins Facebook sites, including those for e-radiology learning, as well as for the neuroradiology division. I'll see you on the internet. Thank you very much for your attention.